Telescope is a scientific equipment and services company focused on robotics and artificial intelligence, targeting the pharmaceutical and chemical industries. The company has recently announced a global distribution agreement with Mettler Toledo, one of the world's top scientific equipment companies, as well as a profitable first quarter. I'm Martin Gagel with Market Radius Research. Please remember this is neither a recommendation nor investment advice. We've got CEO Jason Hine from Telescope joining us and to discuss the recent news. Great seeing you, Jason. Uh, you've got a lot going on. Please tell us about the recent news. Yeah, thanks so much, Martin. Good morning. Uh, yeah, no, we're happy to meet up with everybody. Um, we had a very strong uh, Q1. Um, really on the back of that, that was uh, starting to really uh, amp up uh, the sale and distribution internally of our own uh, product. That's the Direct Inject LC. Um, that's one of our flagship uh, pieces of automation that we've been working on now for the uh, last two, three years. And um, in that last quarter, that's where we start to see really uh, us stepping out into the market and very strong pickup. That's um, also why uh, we were able to sort of uh, push forward and complete the uh, distribution agreement with Met Toledo. Really what this does is now um, they're pulling for us as well. So we have the ability to uh, sail and, uh, and uh, fulfill sales. Uh, through their global uh, network, which is really going to help. It means we can focus on uh, the innovation and uh, supporting our, our, our customers as well uh, without having to uh, expand our own um, sales force or, or get into sort of global uh, uh, reach in terms of the manufacturing. So really excited to see this stuff coming forward. And you've got, uh, yours is a highly scientific business you're, you're working on. Uh, and you, is it fair to say you roughly have sort of three sort of parts of your business. You have the direct inject LC, which is an actual product you sell, you phone up and you order it, so to speak. Um, yep. You do custom services where you solve chemical engineering problems for companies as a service. And then you also do custom robotic systems for chemical, uh, I don't know, engineering. I'm not quite sure how best to describe it. W would that be are a good way to roughly describe the three main lines of your your work? Yeah, absolutely. So the the direct inject is sort of product one. It's kind of the the tool that uh, we can help to distribute to other people. In that uh, second bucket you described, solving chemical problems, you know that this tool direct inject was built for us to be that kind of superpower. It's our way that we kind of look into uh, problems to be able to understand you know what's going on and how to fix it very quickly. So that's why these two pieces marry together. You know we are we've been using uh, this internally for quite some time, and now we get to uh, roll this out as a solution for for other people globally. Um, right now, the installation base is uh, very heavily in the pharmaceutical industry, but starting to uh, to expand to other manufacturing sort of sectors as well. Uh, and the third one, yeah, this is where um, my other hat as a professor at the University of British Columbia, um, we've been the leader in a space known as uh, self-driving labs. These are sort of AI-powered uh, platforms that are meant to be given a general task and then execute and solve that problem kind of on their on their own in sort of an autonomous way. Um, the direct inject component is kind of the eyes. Think of it like if this was a self-driving car, it's it's the LIDAR. It's the thing to help guide whatever the rest of the system does. So the this launch agreement is actually really critical. It actually links all three parts of our businesses um, very well. So with your, with your robotic side, you set up a robotic laboratory where if you're trying to solve a chemical problem, instead of you having a bunch of assistants with beakers putting in a few drops of this and that to figure out what's the best formulation. I, I know I'm saying it very crudely. You, you have the robot doing it and then say, so, okay, we do this and this is the result. Okay, let's try this. Here's the result. And your direct inject LC is the real time testing of what you actually produced. And it's like, oh, exactly. we're getting closer. We're getting further. Oh, we hit it on the head. That kind of exactly. a thing. Exactly. Exactly. It's the thing that's sort of being able to interrogate the reaction. So yeah, broadly, the, the custom platforms we built, it's sort of in one way, it's kind of like um, um, Geek Squad from Best Buy. Uh, a company might identify uh, 10 or 15 different pieces of equipment that they really wish kind of work together. Normally, uh, a scientist would, you know, individually interact with each one of them, 
maybe uh, use each piece to do a part of an experiment, a part of a measurement. We end up building a system where all of that is kind of connected together, where you can kind of start at the front. You only interact with maybe dropping off a sample and then everything else down the chain is sort of connected together and, and, and linked. So all the testing, all the execution is done now with a robotic platform. Um, and you know, where this is valuable, um, not only is it in sort of a discovery sense, just recently there's been some huge uh, developments out of Lawrence Berkeley National Labs and and uh, and globally using this kind of part as, you know, give the system a tool to say, hey, I need a new coding that has these properties and, and it's going through and actually exploring that. The other one is, um, and very heavily for us in process chemistry, there's just certain testing that's necessary before we know something is safe or we need to, you know, run... 24 seven to figure out if something is going to be uh, a de-risk to move forward in, a, in like a new pharmaceutical. Good example. Of this comes from the pandemic where um, it was, you know, all, all hands on deck to, to figure out uh, what the right uh, formulation was for the, uh, for the vaccines or for the oral COVID uh, medications. These platforms are built to do that kind of uh, testing and work um, either evenings, weekends when somebody isn't supposed to be there, uh, but also alongside of other scientists. So, so the scientist is guiding the train saying, well, this is where we need to go. Um, the platform's job is to really augment their work, almost like um, Tony Stark's suit of armor, basically to, to, to help uh, with efficiency, but also uh, safety. At the end of January, you released your first quarter results for fiscal 2024. You're still a young company, but you had a million and a half of revenues and you were profitable. Can you just give us some highlights from that quarter? Yeah, like, again, I think that part of it is uh, we have some weird splitting of where our quarters go and we're still a little bit lumpy in terms of the uh, uh, the business coming through. Uh, so this was sort of an aggregation of really strong end of year uh, uh, work and some just phenomenal uh, work by our team. Like everybody on our side has been pulling really, really hard to uh, to start to see this kind of acceleration. Um, I think we're technically done Q2 pretty much um, because of where our sort of our points go. So we will have reporting of that coming up pretty soon. Um, but we, what we expect now is now that we're kind of moving into less of the R&D, especially for the uh, direct inject and more into this distribution model, uh, this is going to get sort of wins in our sales. Now we have some predictable uh, revenues, particularly with the distribution agreement, um, there's a, a firm sales number that's agreed upon, meaning we know going into the entire year that uh, Mettler will uh, will uh, be buying this many sort of uh, items. So that, that provides us with a lot more um, certainty for our, our, our growth strategy. So this allows us to target um, some picking up some people at our management team and, and to sort of targeting some more aggressive um, uh, development projects that have bigger horizons behind them as well, too. One of your direct inject LC machines, I'm, I know there are different sort of add-ons and so forth you can put onto it. Uh, ballpark, what is the order of magnitude of, or the list price, call it, uh, of the machine? Just so people have an idea, is it a thousand dollar, ten thousand, hundred thousand dollar machine? Yeah, it, it's it, it does vary depending on exactly where it's going through and stuff like that. But think of it as sort of about a hundred thousand uh, dollar piece of equipment. So it is a sort of a specialty uh, uh, device. Um, but, um, and, you know, this is the type of thing that uh, it, it does sit between any sort of chemical reaction and some kind of an analytical. This current version of it is built for uh, liquid chromatography as kind of the back end thing that does the interrogation. Uh, what's really exciting about this product line, though, is um, we can now expand out to a whole bunch of other analytical kits. So if the general problem uh, is you have some sample somewhere that you need to uh, extract from a dangerous environment, um, convert it into something that's compatible with your analytical kit, hand it over to the analytical and then uh, execute it, this system will do that. So there's a whole host of other uh, measurement type uh, systems beyond just liquid chromatography where this system would perfectly marry into. And that's actually a major thing we're going to be focusing on this year is now that the liquid chromatography version is done in sailing, that's what Mettler is going to help us with. We can now turn to these other uh, markets, uh, which would open us up to things like oil and gas, uh, nutraceuticals and other sort of, uh, you know, health and food kind of areas. Um, lots of other possibilities for this sort of uh, same sort of uh, insight technology. You lost me a little bit there. Are you saying that the same equipment can now be the, the direct inject LC can be sold into different vertical markets or that you 
you're, you're going to create new versions of the direct inject that have some different censoring capabilities, let's say, that will be yeah. suitable for these other markets. It's it's uh, lateral. So it's the basis that we've got right now allows us to expand into these other markets by having a new sensor on the back end of it. Really, okay. again, the fund fundamentals of the pieces that we built now um, can be transposed. These are still going to be new R&D projects. But the interesting thing about it is um, that that legacy experience we have allows us to really uh, to easily jump into those spaces. So what you're saying is there are a lot of growth opportunities there. There's a lot of growth opportunities there. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, we need to wrap this up here for, as a, it's a short update. What other types of news or uh, events should people be uh, expecting over the coming months? Additional distribution or clients or or what other types of things could we uh, yeah. expect to see? I think the biggest thing is, uh, so we're seeing some very strong growth and, and pick up from the market. So uh, as soon as we can, we'll tell you how the distribution group is going. Um, I'm expecting us to exceed sort of our first year um, uh, projections in terms of uh, the rapid pickup. Uh, also, as I mentioned, um, we're going to be uh, adding some people to the management team to really help with this new sort of maturity that we're kind of moving into right now. So we'll we'll be uh, announcing that uh, fairly soon. Um, also, um, we're not so much distribution agreements on this hardware point, but more collaborative or, or development agreements on some strategic projects we've been uh, pushing through. So now with this in our in our bag, um, we can start targeting some of the more application driven ones in those other two sectors, uh, the sort of uh, uh, chemical problems and the custom automation uh, sector that we've discussed before. All right. We got a lot going on. Jason, thank you very much for giving us the update. That was great. Uh, have a great day and talk to you again soon. You too. Thanks very much, Martin.